Even though this is a running gun music video, I wanted to write some things down so that when it came time for me to be on set, I'm not stumped and I'm not just looking around for things to do. I don't really enjoy doing running gun music videos. I like to do planning, so I have to at least write something down. We're in middle of note and this is my pre-production. It's very light, but this actually helped me a ton. First thing we're gonna look at is my rapid ideas. Now for me, rapid ideas when it comes to music video planning, it's just me listening through to the song and typing out everything that comes to mind as soon as I'm listening to the song. And these could be random. These could be things that I don't necessarily end up doing, but I like to get these out on the page because if I don't, I'll forget them more than likely. Creative angles, low angles, high angles, Wanted to get a shot of him waking up on the side of the bed, shot through the car mirror, performance. I wanted to get shots of him in the bathroom mirror. Also wanted to write down, make moments. I think with running up music videos, the things that I don't really like about a majority of the time is that they're just two to three performances throughout the entire song. You just alternate between those and it gets very boring for the viewer early. So I wanted to write down, make moments in a sense that when this happens in the music video, it doesn't happen again at this point. I wanted to film everything. That's another thing that I don't really like about running up music videos majority of the time is that they're just boring. It's not a lot happening. So I wanted to film everything and just give you the experience of you being there on set, being on the block and just giving you the feel that he was giving off when he made the song. Next thing we have is our color palette. I like to develop a color palette for the music video before I even shoot it this way. I know how I should shoot it when it's time for me to shoot it. I can shoot warmer, I can shoot cooler to get me closer to the color palettes that I know I want to achieve when it comes to post. I wrote down how I wanted to split up the music video into different sections. So I wanted to do house interior shots through the first 40 seconds of the, the music video. Then for the second 40 second portion of the music video, I wanted to do shots of him outside in a car. And then the third 40 second portion of the song, I wanted that to be all nighttime stuff. And then the outro would just be either overhead performance and just me getting all of that candid B-roll that I planned on getting while I was on set. And then I just pulled some of my favorite frames from the music video that give me the exact same vibe for me, the color or angle choices or just some ideas that I could do for the music video. first interior scene that we're setting up. The lighting we're using for this is the new Amron F22C. This is their brand new flex light. That's by color. I love this. I'm going to be having, uh, I guess, the first look of this coming to the channel tomorrow. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. I haven't used it enough to give it a full review, but I do like it and it's perfect for this scenario right here. The fact that this flex light has such a small footprint, it's easy for me to be able to get it into the scene and not be in the frame at all. So we just have this off the camera right over top of the window, just replicating the look of how the lighting would look coming from this window. interior shots I don't have behind the scenes for, but I just use the natural available lighting for these setups. The shot of him in the bathroom and also the shots of him upstairs on the bed were all lit by the one light source in the scene, which is just the window. But I want to be in the passenger side of the car, so I want to track him. All right, so my driver? Yeah, so I want to catch a shot with you driving and me hanging out the passenger just All to right. get B-roll in hand, and then um, we'll do that a couple times. I'll switch up the, the, uh, the focal link. We'll figure it out. Oh, All yeah, right, I'm gonna post it on YouTube. Yeah. 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 And I'm gonna just direct you, so I'm gonna tell you to go fast, to pull off on me, go slower, and we gonna do it a couple times, all right? Uh, We're on this street. Yeah, on this street right uh -huh. here. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we're gonna gear up and then we're just gonna ride down here and then when we get on there, we're gonna turn around and come back up this way. Uh. Pull up on them, get like side, like next to them. Mm -hmm. 
All right, take off on me. Take off on me. Yep. Take off on me. I feel like that was ass. To be completely honest with you. That wasn't it. Let's do it out again. I just want to catch a wide, like, actual motion, like Rocky. I can cut to potentially. Who knows? Be some. me using my iPhone in these shots and I'm using my iPhone to capture the vintage footage for the music video. I did that because the app Dascam actually looks really good for iPhone footage that is, you know, replicating film look. And it's also simple and it makes the people in the music video a lot more comfortable if I'm just running around filming on my phone. So instead of me filming it super high quality on my C70 and degrading it at post, I could just do it on my phone. It's easy, it's simple. Way too hot. Hey man, hot. At 16%, my boy. This two point lighting setup we're doing for these night scenes. I'm using a new Amron F22C flex panel for this as well. I'm running this off of a V-Lock and this is a great application for this light as well because it's small, it runs off of a V-Lock and I'm able to adjust my temperature of the light to better match the street lights that you would get just being out on the streets. And then the key light that I'm using is the new Amaron tubes. This is the four foot version. And I just matched the color temperature of both of these lights. I decided to raise the tube up a little bit higher to replicate a look of what you would get from a street light. And this is a super simple lighting setup, nothing over the top at all. And the last lighting setup that we use for the music video, we're using a flex light. And we just boom that up above, same color temperature. And this is a super simple setup, nothing over the top either. The red cast that he's getting is actually just coming from the brake light on the car. I just decided to run with it. I thought it looked cool. It was a super simple setup, but that's that. So there in the timeline, I have all of my clips and they're all clip to clip. I wanna briefly go over the effects and some of the things that I use to spice up this music video. A couple of the things I wanna highlight are these zoom in effects right here for the music video. Now these are very subtle. If I play through that, you can see it's just ever so slightly zooming in. And these effects are for Motion VFX. This is from their M Music Video Pack, which is awesome. And they are the sponsor of today's video. Now this M Music Video Pack is incredible and it's a lot of other things that you can do beyond just this zoom in and zoom out effect that I use for the music video. If I click on here and just show you guys a couple of the things that are in here, it's awesome. They have a dynamic movement, which I'll show you guys how this works in a second because I used this throughout the end of the music video where the tempo of the song switched up and I wanted to get more of a hype vibe for it. But they have a ton of different camera movements. They have a handheld movement. I'll play this clip through right here. You can see that it's just a static shot. I shot this handheld and then I uh, stabilized it in post. If I drop this handheld effect onto this clip though, you can see that we instantly get a handheld uh, vibe for this shot, which is awesome. And it looks good too. Yeah, from here you can see if I scrub through these uh, movements 
they're awesome and they have a bunch of different um, adjustments that you can do for these as well. I'm gonna drop this on just so you can see what this one does. Let's rotate out. And you can see this actually looks really good on a still shot. And it's, it's so easy to use. If I click on it, you can see all of these different adjustments that I can make. I can animate it smooth in and out. And then I can also adjust the sharpness because it is gonna be zooming in on the clip. Now, a couple of other effects that this has, I, I can also play this through to you as well. This is the dynamic effect, which is awesome. It just, it does a bunch of different erratic movements. And at this part of the song where the tempo just goes up, it fits this vibe so well. And I ended up using this throughout the entire end of the music video because the tempo and the flow and everything that Ray was doing just matched this vibe so well. And I didn't film it that way on set. So you don't have to make that creative choice on set. If you don't want to film super rocky things, you can just drop this dynamic um, camera movement from the end music video pack straight onto your clip. And then you can get that in post and it will fit the vibe of the music video. Aside from that, this pack also has a ton of effects. I didn't use many of these effects for this music video. One effect that I did use that I absolutely love and I always use Black Pro Mist to get this effect is this light diffuse. Now light diffuse basically just diffuses anything that's super bright in the shot. And it has a bunch of different um, adjustments here that you can do to get this exactly how you would like it to be. So if I turn this off, you can see um, this window just goes to straight solid, which looks good. I just like the diffuse because it makes the image softer. So I ended up putting that on the entire music video. So at certain parts like this one right here where you see the window, if I turn it off and on, you can see it's just giving us that really nice halation bloom on some of the blown out areas of the music video. And same thing for the shot right here in the bathroom. It just gives us a really nice rim right here on Red's uh, neck in the shot if I turn it off and on. And it just looks good. It just makes the video look a lot softer and a lot more uh, filming, in my opinion. You got a burn effect, which is like a, like a light leak that you can use for transition throughout clips. Color adjustment right here, which you can use for transitions. You got film grain, drop frame effect. Uh, if you want to do a film mat overlay for some of these clips, you can do that as well. They have flares, which I don't necessarily really use myself, but I can see like people who would want to use flares. And, um, you know, if I just drop this over these clips right here, you can see exactly what the flares look like and what they do. And you have different adjustments for these as well. You can change the color, the hue. For these shots, I would definitely change the hue to something a bit warmer. Now they have a prism effect, they have a parallax effect, which is actually really dope. And I've seen people use this in a, in a tight way to you know, transition between certain clips. I'm just gonna drop this on so you can see what this looks like. And aside from that, they have a vintage look. If you wanna make your footage have more of a vintage vibe, you can drop that on. VHS effect, they also have different LUTs, different titles. There's a bunch of things in this pack that make it awesome. But these are just the things that I use for my music video. I love the zoom ins, the zoom outs, the movements, uh, the light diffuse is awesome. If you didn't film with uh, Promise, you didn't have to make that creative decision. On set, you can do it in post with this and it's super easy. All of these things are drag and drop. And I love this pack. I've been using it for a little bit and I think that things that it offer are awesome. So if you're interested in this, I'm gonna leave a link down to this in the description. Motion VFX also has a ton of other packs as well. And this specific M Music Video pack is available on DaVinci Resolve as well. So if you use DaVinci, you wanna use these exact same effects and assets, definitely check out Motion VFX. They have a ton of other things that I use, but specifically for this music video, this is uh, the M Music Video pack that I use and the different effects that I did to spice up the shots for this music video. This edit is super simple. My philosophy with it was just, like I said, make moments. Chop the music video up into different places, add a ton of different B-roll, make it not really rappy where it's like super performance based, but I use the iPhone and dash cam to get these vintage shots. And I like the vintage candid B-roll. It makes people a lot more um, comfortable on camera if I just film them on my phone, you know? And I knew I was gonna put the, uh, the, the vintage effect and also like the super 16 frame and stuff on it as well. So that's pretty much the edit. I wanna hop into the color grade really quick and show you guys what I did with that. Now I'm using Color Finale to do my color grading. I use Color Finale pretty much all the time. If I'm doing any color grading, I just like to use Color Finale. I feel like it's a cleaner system and I like the layer-based um, things that I can rename and see what's happening. So if I click all of these off, and I'm also gonna take off my light diffusion as well, so you can um, just see what the clip looked like on its own. So if I take all my layers off and I just turn off my color finale, 
this is what the clip looked like with a Rec. 709 conversion. It already looks good. It already has the contrast and the moodiness that we need for the shot. Turn this back on. We added some contrast just to pump it and give it that, uh, that contrasty look. Second thing we did is broaden the tone curve, and this just flattens the image out a little bit. It was super contrasty. This just flattens it out, brings our blacks up a little bit, brings our whites down. And the next is our color adjustment. This is the color that we needed to give us that warm feel for the music video. I wanted to punch it. I feel like sometimes when I watch music videos, I love them because they go over the top with the grade. I just be kind of scared to go there myself. So I just really wanted to punch it, like not have clean whites. Um, I did want the blacks clean, which I'll show you in a second, but I just wanted to, to punch it. And for the color adjustment, it's just basically me dragging my highlights into that, that area, that warm area. For the hue adjustments, um, this is just me adjusting certain hues, making my greens a certain tone, making my blues a certain tone. And again, this is just me kind of falling back and referencing the color palette that I did earlier in the music video, um, in, the, in the breakdown for uh, the music video. I have this on an adjustment layer, so it's basically affecting every single clip under it. And the next thing I did was I did a slight skin adjustment um, where I brought down the saturation and the shadows just a tad bit for the music video. I feel like in certain areas, the skin tones were a bit hot in the shadows. So um, I just ended up kind of pulling them down a little bit. You can see without it, it doesn't look bad, but I just ended up pulling down the shadows just a tad bit in the, uh, the skin tones. Next thing I did was I cleaned up the blacks. I wanted to make sure my blacks were clean. So, you know, I did a saturation versus luminance and then on the lower end, I ended up pulling out the saturation. And then the final thing that I did was I uh, ended up doing a refocus. And this is just basically um, a shape mask and it just gives the image a slight vignette. If I go to like the shots of him in the bathroom, um, you can see this like, what's happening here a lot. So if I take that refocus off, you can see it looks good. This just helps focus you and hone you really in into the frame a little bit more. And essentially that's really the color grade for the music video. Super simple, it's nothing over the top. Um, I think the way this was filmed and the way I filmed it already, already really matched um, the vibe that I was going for. So I didn't really have to do much when it came to color grading. So that's before. And that's after with the color grade. And uh, it's exactly the same for these um, shots right here of them outdoors as well. I'm gonna show you guys some before and afters of that just so you can see what's going on too. So that's the before of them outside and that's the after with the warm tones on it with the refocus. And um, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. So that's gonna conclude this music video breakdown from start to finish. If you guys want more of these start to finish breakdowns, make sure to let me know down in the comment section below. If you're new to the channel, I make music video content, so consider hitting that subscribe button if you enjoy this. Make sure to drop this video a like, but I'm out, y'all. Peace.